What's good, Humble Squad? It's your boy, Humble Ziggy. We back here with another reaction. And so, I just want to say since the first reaction to Louis, Lou Astia, Lou Astia, the first reaction to his video that I did, which was the why rappers are afraid of Kendrick Lamar. Hey, so far at the time of this recording, it's doing pretty well. It's getting over like a thousand plus views. So hey, appreciate y'all for watching that video. So I figured why not come back to this? Why not come back to his channel again? And look, we still on, I'm still gonna be on the, we, cause let's be honest, we, everybody's still on the whole Kendrick Drake thing and such. So hey, and what better way to still be on that than talking more about Drake, but more specifically, what happens when Drake goes on a feature, gets on a song of somebody who's gonna, who's on the potential to blow up, and then when Drake go on, Drake be on their song and such, they instantly blow up. I mean, hell, think about it. The Migos, Black Boy JB, who else? Uh, freaking Lil Durk, um, Lil Baby. I don't think the baby has been doing that yet. Well, like there could be a lot more and such. Did Young Thug did one? But you get what I'm saying. Where you always want, you always see that whenever Drake hops on their song, they instantly blow up, right? They within instants. But you always want to know, will they still have that type of same energy that when they were coming up and such? Everybody was saying they're, the, they're up next in this and such, right? And then after getting that Drake feature, then they rise to stardom. But you always wonder what happens. Most people want to know what happens after the Drake feature. So I got the, so we got this video from Louis Lou Estia Lou Estia. I'm gonna keep saying like that Lou Estia called the Drake feature curse because sometimes hey. Sometimes with them Drake features, it could be a blessing or sometimes it'll be good at one point, but then afterwards, it might be bad on you. So let's dive on into this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all my socials up there. And without further ado, let's get into this. For years, people have talked about Drake giving new artists a major boost with a feature, either on one of their songs or guesting on his projects. Because exactly. he's seen as putting so many rappers on Yeah, Meek Mill Future. Years, it's no surprise that a lot of them feel indebted to him. I miss Drake, like, yeah, he a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? He like, right. he real observant. So this has so been in a long time. Me, like, 2018 we're gonna make it happen but we made it happen for real but while we all know the success stories of people like Lil Baby and 21 Savage what and happens that when too. Drake Cosign backfires and becomes the highlight of your career and yeah. does that feature from Drizzy come with strings attached that means you can never escape his shadow from Kendrick Lamar accusing Drake of quote running to Atlanta when he needs a few dollars and, and specifically hey. mentioning how he uses his features with rappers and what's so crazy is the three that are just talk like listed off and such like like Lil Baby, Hell, the Future and so and such. Some of them features were I just talked about. Black Boy JB, most of them niggas are from Atlanta. So really think about it. Kendrick's bar right there where he said about how you run to Atlanta when you need a check balance. Nigga. Almost every single artist that he is went to and such for the better part of half a decade right now has been from Atlanta Lil Baby 21 Savage Black Boy JB Lil, well no Lil Dirk was technically Lil Dirk's from Chicago but he moved to Atlanta but you know what I mean Future like nigga even though Future was already popping but let's face it as soon as when he got on, he soon collaborated with Drake. Let's be honest. He went more skyrocket lit than ever. And you cannot tell me I'm wrong. Let's be honest. When Future was in the game, he, when Future was coming up and such, he was getting his records here and there and such, right? He was building up. But let's be honest. He wasn't really much like 
hitting like we used, like how we was hitting right now and such. And then came around 2015, 2016, most likely with their collab, their first collab album, What a Time to Be Alive. Nigga, you had like, the bangers like Jumpman, Break Rings, like, bro. Especially Jumpman. Jumpman, 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 that boy's up to something. Like, nigga, come the fuck on. You cannot tell me those weren't bangers and shit. Still to this day, you got people who are still singing those songs. I guarantee it. Back it up. Escape his shadow. From Kendrick Lamar accusing Drake of quote running to Atlanta when he needs we a few dollars, and specifically yeah. mentioning how he uses his features with rappers like Future, Twenty One Savage, Lil Baby, and Two Chains as a way to be mm -hmm. more accepted by the culture. It highlights yeah, a deeper point crazy. that I want to dive more into the later in the video. Cause these days we have even the Migos, even though they were already up in a rise and such, when the minute. They got Drake on their Versace song, the one that blew them up instantly. They already blew up from Versace. But the minute Drake came on the song again for the remix, instantly these motherfuckers went to... Sorry, my headphones got in the way. Instantly they went up to a skyrocket. Tell me I'm wrong. Rappers like Rod Wave, a top selling rapper with a die hard fan base, and the ability to sell out huge venues worldwide, even going as far as to turn down a feature from Drake. So it's clear that something fishy is going on, but before we get into how things went so wrong, I first need to explain how Drizzy got this reputation as a cheat code for success. By the year 2020, Drake assisted 32 artists to their highest Hot 100 position at the time. This included major stats like Kendrick Lamar, Future, Lil Baby, and many, many more. On average, the artists climbed up 19 spots from their previous highest position. Plus, 18 of these artists had never even made it onto the charts in the first Like, Rick, hell, here's one of them, what I was listing earlier, Blockboy JB. Nigga didn't even have a banger song that even charted the 100, but in the minute Drake got on his song, look what happened. Charted the 100. Like, let's be honest, Drake is a, like he said, Drake is a cheat code for whenever you want to have an instant hit on your hands. 18 of these artists had never even made it onto the charts in the first place before they got that Drake stimmy. His peak moment of helping other artists came in 2017 when he brought seven fellow rappers onto the billboards or at least gave them a boost. By 2021, he'd appear on 41 projects as a guest since 2015, and 30 times out of those 41, his track had the highest streams on Spotify and YouTube for the entire project. And of course, Drake didn't just let those numbers speak for themselves. He's constantly boasted about these accomplishments on songs like Mob Ties. And now that Drake is facing opposition Literally. from artists like Future, Rick Ross, The Weeknd, and Kendrick Lamar, during the Raps of Award that's taken a hold of the game, his track yeah. push-ups also hinted towards those who benefited from the stimulus package, with shots like, every song that made it onto the charts he got from Drizzy, and I mean, he's number one, I had to put it in your hand. Which was basically Future, that one was a definitely shot at Future, because, let's be honest, Future had bangers, we're not discrediting that. Like I just said earlier, with Jumpman, Hell, Wicked, freaking March Mad, well, March Madness? Not much March Madness, but you know what I'm saying. He had slappers, but has any one of them charted number one? Mm -mm. They could have been charted number two, number 10, 20, 30, 50, right? But none of his banger songs. Whether it's from a, what is just a single or from one of his albums, has never charted number one. And because of Drake, this nigga's first charted number one was from was way too sexy, and that was from 2019, nigga. 2019. So I'm just saying, nigga. The f you cannot say he ain't wrong on that part. Literally gave him his number one. Because of the reputation as a hit maker who can uplift an artist's career, it's meant that getting the guest spot from Drake outshines cosigns from legends in the industry. A Jay Z feature is still is still considered one of the most important features you can get to this day. 
Drake. This was especially true for someone like Lil Durk, who was famously featured on Drake's absolute smash hit, Laugh Now Cry Later. In the studio, right? This motherfucker Drake come through the DM, like, I don't see your number. Man, you told me this before. I put the bit on that compilation he did, like, draw like four songs, and then get on it. So when he said DM me his number, I'm like, he sent the song through. I called everybody. Are you rich? It's over with. Like, shit, <laughs> he, got that, he got that touch for real. You hear me? See? Lil Durk yeah, know that. I turned to a fan that motherfucking day. I called everybody. Mama. It's, it's over down. with. I'm finna do this motherfucker. We finna fuck him up on it. We finna go. And then so we came out. And the song was during the pandemic. Yeah. Little, think about that. Lil Durk got one of his most fire hits and such. Wait, was it on Drake? No, it was on Drake's. It's Drake's song and such. But Lil Durk was on it. So, in a way, you can see... He's still, it's still in a way in that realm, but let's face it. Like I said, even though Lil Durk had, it's basically this for all the ones I'm saying. Even though they had slappers, even though they were on a good run, the minute Drake is, the minute Drake calls you up, the minute you're gonna be on a song with Drake or Drake is gonna be on your song, either way. You are guaranteed a certified smash. Proof. This is all like that saying goes. Men lie. Numbers. Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. Where's the lie whenever they say that? So, hey. And before anybody says it, because I know there's probably going to be some comments there. Look, I'm not deriding Drake or anything like that. That's not the case. But when facts is facts, let's be honest. Some of y'all favorite rappers out there. Right? Yeah, you say you could be listening to them since day one and such. But let's be honest. They would have not been popular. To, they could have. But they won't be as popular of today. If Drake didn't get them on one of these songs. Let's straight up be on. If you cannot tell me that ain't true, you lying. And I'm not saying I'm like I said, I'm not a stan of Drake or anything. His music is cool to me sometimes and such, depending on what it is. But I ain't gonna act like this nigga, like he, like Dirk even Dirk literally said it. This motherfucker got that touch. No diddy. And crazy is to say that type of shit with the whole thing about him being a pedo. But you know what I mean. He got that music touch. Anything else? That's crazy. But other, but besides, but relatively to music, he got that touch. My, my bridge is over. Like shit, he got that. He got that touch for real. Yeah. No yeah, I turned to a fan that motherfucking day. I call everybody. Mama, it's, it's over down. with. I'm finna do this motherfucker. We finna fuck him up on it. And we finna go. And then so we came out, and the song was during the pandemic. Yeah, we went straight to a hundred. Uh -huh. And then it just kept shout out to Drizzy, man. Yeah, shout out Drake though. He definitely helped the motherfucker out. That. Praised by so many who got that first taste of the billboard through him, it's one of the few things that, until recently at least, most of his fellow MCs were happy to salute Drizzy for. I'm the only person that put on for me Which when is I crazy. Had nobody was Drake. I'm talking about Drake was the first person. Wow. Think about it like hell, even with Travis Scott too. Oh, not Travis Scott, my dumbass. ASAP Rocky. Don't, don't y'all dare crucify me in the comments. I corrected myself. I corrected myself, so don't even dare. <laughs> don't y'all even dare. But yeah, let's be honest. Which song was it? Which song? Hold on, let me, what my phone? Yes, I'm doing this real time because I want to make sure. Hold on. Um, hold on. Yep, yeah, it was the song I was thinking for because I wanted to make sure I wasn't tripping. Literally, his one of his his well his hit one of his hit songs was with Drake. Even though it had other rappers like Two Chains and Kendrick Lamar, was effing problems. But it still had Drake on it. So, nigga. Come the fuck on. 
Because that was the song I was like, thinking of. Or anybody. He didn't want to sign me. Yeah. He didn't want it. It was like, yo, that's raw talent, yo. Like, I, you got to shine, yo. I'm going to see to it. For, I forever, forever owe Drake. Well, that's a little awkward now, considering the recent events that's taken the game by storm. But yeah, as which as is Dr- kind of crazy now, that nigga. Hell, M- e- it's basically like this. Eminem weren't. Drake like from years ago like about this shit. I like to talk about how he can basically give rappers exposure or even revive their careers. This is only one side of the story. Because for every success for people like Flacco, Savage, or The Weeknd, there are people <laughs> like Blockboy JB, Social yeah. Geek, OVO Signee's division in the UK gigs, who haven't returned to the Billboard charts ever since. As for others who kept their place in the game, the problem is that they just failed to replicate the early rush of publicity that came from the Drizzy feature. That's why when the new artist Forbats got a collab with Drake, which debuted with 3 million streams in its opening 24 hours on Spotify, not everyone saw it as a good thing for his future. So who are the artists whose careers capsized after getting the call from Drake, and how much is he to blame? When you think of an artist who fell off after getting the Drake feature, they don't come much bigger than Block Yeah, Hey man. Let's, like I wasn't I just talking about this Blackboard JB because of because let's face it the first initial song of it and such let's be honest it was annoying at first I mean yeah shoot shoot was the dance and all but let's be honest because of Drake on that feature he made that song 100 times better and that's a that's a fact and y'all know that this MC, who initially garnered attention with tracks like Shoot, mm. over featuring 21 Savage, and the dance that Fortnite would later steal, Block <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. Lee found himself getting the fame DM from Drizzy, where he claimed he was his favorite rapper. They would eventually collab on a hit song titled Look Alive. Oh yeah, and he was Look Alive. Yeah, 901 rap. Yeah, Look Alive, not Shoot. My bad. Sorry, it was Look Alive. Yeah, that was the song. Either way. And somehow, think about it like this. With Drake being on the song, why did Black Boy had more Black Boy had more energy in that mother sucker than in his other and then his other songs before Drake come along? It went crazy when it debuted, as it basically took over the game and quickly landed Blockboy in the double XL freshman list for 2018, crazy. as well as a record deal with Interscope. Peaking at number 5 on the Billboard charts, the track's official yeah. video now has over 390 million views on YouTube alone. But for all the momentum he had, it's all just evaporated once Drizzy did what he always does and moved on to the next hot thing. When his debut album Fatboy dropped in 2020, it failed to chart and the same unfortunately goes for 2022's Back to the Block. Although he still has his loyal core fans, resulting in 2.4 million listeners on Spotify, he struggled to come to terms with the negative impact that Look Alive had on his career, even when people pointed out to him. Do you feel like you, in some ways, you kind of blew up so fast that it gave people weird expectations of what was supposed to be coming from you? Not to be honest. I feel like it. I didn't even blow up that fast. It's just like motherfuckers wouldn't even own me. So I just, when I had this song, it blew up. I didn't blow up. The song blew up. Mm-hmm. So like, hey, even he's admitted it. The song did him. The song definitely blew up. But him as a, him the artist himself, not so much. Cause think about it. When was the last time anybody is listening to a Blackboard JB song? Tell me, because I'm, I'm not saying he's not still rapping. And obviously, he still is. But let's be honest. Have you out there, have you still, besides from when you listened to that Look Alive song, are you currently still listening to Black Boy JB? I know I'm not. Not to hate on him or anything, but I'm just saying. No one has ever said, still in, to this day, in 2024, are saying, hey, put that new Black Boy JB on. No one's saying that. Honest to God, no one is saying that. This song, it blew up. I didn't blow up the song. Blew Don't up. blew up. So like, people didn't even just know that I had like fucking four mixtapes out before this this shit. So I always had a grind anyway. So I feel like people just don't understand it. Even though things aren't in his favor, Blockboy is confident that good things are coming his way. He's still going mean, hey. to rise to the top again and will eventually step out of Drake's shadow. I mean, hey. They're tuned out and guess what? They're going to come back again. Hmm. If I see like 
it, it's just time. It just takes hey, time. And like, keep on grinding, you keep going. rapping, and the more like, people go relax. Keep going. Hey, kudos to him. Hey, shout out to him for keep on grinding, cause it's like I said, ain't nobody listening to him. But hey, he still got his core fan base. So hey, keep on doing your thing, black it's boy. The bigger your fan base get, like. You, I know when I first dropped them with my real fans. Mm -hmm. Like, I already knew that because I, every time I look at my comments, we just see something about Drake or some shit. But now, like, the comments change. What's interesting is that these days, Blockboy is trying to ride the same wave by reaching out to Drake for another collaboration. This time, he didn't just slide into Drake's DMs, but he made it public on his Instagram story saying, I think it's time for another one at Champagne Poppy. This time around, even Drake's fans recognized that there wasn't much for the Six God to game from teaming up with Blockboy ever again. Some even have gone far as to comment things like, Drake probably avoiding watching that story right now, and Blockboy fell off. No waves to ride there for the boy. Rather than being the megastar that Look Alive set him up to be, Blockboy is now left in obscurity, and his fallout is even being mocked by fellow rappers like Bandman Kevo. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. He shouldn't have said nothing about me. He fell off. He do not got no money like me. He shouldn't have came at me. He fell off. He, all that dancing and doing this with the leg shit is over with. It's over with, bro. You don't got it. Once riding a wave that Drake hopped on, only to jump off before it faded, Blockboy isn't alone in briefly benefiting from Drake's knack for recognizing what's hot in the culture. Sometimes this phenomenon even extends to rappers from Drake's own city, which was the case for a rapper by the name of Smiley. And oh, yeah. Did, from yeah, Smiley, I remember. Smiley started his career rhyming with the Garden Game. Ain't gonna lie. Didn't he? Wasn't Drake on his one of his songs before? Literally. No, yeah, come to think of it, I remember his name. Where the fuck he's been? Honest to God. This ain't even me trying to be like, well, I am trying to be entertaining to y'all, but honest to God. Where the fuck this nigga went? <laughs> Sorry if I'm cursing too much and all, but, and pausing too much, but nigga, you came to a reaction channel. You come to a reaction channel, don't expect it. But honestly, where the fuck this nigga went? And he signed to Drake's label? Where the fuck he went? By the name of Smiley. An underground MC from Toronto, Smiley started his career rhyming with the Garden Gang click. After a 2015 stint in jail derailed his momentum, Smiley got his initial exposure through tracks like Nine On Me, and soon, Drake could be seen rapping his track from the pool. Officially on Drake's radar since 2017, he soon signed to Drake's OVO label, and to him, it seemed like the perfect scenario. At that point, Drake really started pushing him heavily on social media. I seen a picture with you and Ross, and Drake captions the shit that you're his favorite rapper. Oh, yeah, yeah. That right? What that felt like when you seen that? It was love still. I already, like, he's already said things like that too already, so I was like, I just surprised he posted that like that, you know? Right, right. Yeah. With that kind of cosign, he started to believe that he was the one. Sure, it's like, I've finally gotten to embrace everything. Like, you know, I understand it, but like, I've been like that. I've been asking myself, like, why me? Why me? But I'm gonna keep asking myself that for how long now? Like, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's, it's me, it's me. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Real yeah. shit. Why me? We're but here. it's just, it's love. Like, that's was crazy because now i even see what he sees real yeah. shit like you know it's crazy it's like it's i do believe like but unfortunately for smiley no one else saw it and when he finally got the drake cosign on 2021's over the top his flow got clowned by the masses and everyone pretty much thought he fumbled his opportunity yeah literally that was the song that people was like what the why the fuck did this nigga why the fuck Drake signed him? Look, I'm not trying Look, my dude, you know what was well, not to say he didn't know, but dude, if you know you got the co-sign from Drake and he's on your song, you're not on his song, he's on your song. So nigga, you should have known to come more correct. You should have came more prepared and more good on your song. 
on your own song. That's when you know. And then you got people going to clown you on your own song. Come on now. What am I listening to? The comments were just as ruthless. One of the hardest verses from Drake in a long time, and Smiley does this. Yes. Smiley sounds like he has tickle battles with his homeboys. Despite the fact that the track got number 57 on the chart, his 2021 album, Buy or Buy 2, sold abysmally, clocking in at just 1.5 units in its. Nigga. 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 What? Only fifteen hundred, nigga. I haven't seen numbers that bad since when I saw freaking Smoke Perps like album from when it was like what twenty twenty or something twenty 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 one something like that, right? Nigga, and that only sold like what. 3,000 or so? It was something like 3,000 or something like that. Nigga, how do you sell worse than Smoke Perp? Hmm? How do you... How did this shit sell way worse than Smoke Perp, nigga? Correct me if I'm wrong. Hold on. Nah, you know what? No. No, actually, yeah, fuck this. I'm... Y'all seen this real time. I know this. Hold on. Smoke perp worse. Album. Twin. Oh no, 5,000. So yeah, this was back in 2020, right? Yeah, it was 5,000. But still, that was still shit. But the fact that you sell way... But this is, even though it says estimate, nigga, the point is, if it's still around that area, the fact that you... The fact that Smoke Perps Florida Jig that was in 2020, and this got released in 2021, the fact that Smoke Perps album from a year from the previous year sell way more than yo shit done so I'm sorry that, that, sh that is crazy that smoke man or buy two sold abysmally Clocking in at just 1.5k units in its first week. Since then, it's barely week. been a factor, but has denied falling off. Without any real evidence to back it up, aside from the fact that he was chilling on a boat. But falling by the wayside in Drake's priorities after a hit isn't exactly anything new. I mean, just look at what happened to I Love Makona, another artist. Nigga, he was the next <laughs> shit. Him? Boy or oh boy? Forget even Drake, nigga. The entire industry at one point was wondering, was trying, was saying, was even distant from this nigga. Nigga, he, we had his song, Club Going Up, on a Tuesday. Like, nigga, you cannot tell me in 2014 nobody wasn't singing that. Because, nigga, everybody was. Club going up, going up on a Tuesday. Got your bro in the comments you choose, man. Club going up. And then Drake comes in and does his thing. Isn't exactly anything new. I mean, just look at what happened to I Love Makona, another artist who acquired Drake's attention from a self released project. Makona's debut EP popped off, courtesy of tracks like Tuesday and I Don't Sell Molly No More. After putting in a mostly Tuesday digital, Drizzy got his hands on the track and suddenly Makonan's life changed. <laughs> and when Drake got on it, what'd you say? Oh man, I just fainted in the house. <laughs> I saw that little video. <laughs> 
I was like, what the hell happened? You know what I, mean? I was just tripping with my friends, you know what I'm saying, smoking weed, hanging out. Somebody tweeted me a link like, oh, that new Drake and Alan McCona is fire. And I just favored it. Like, oh, yeah, that would be dope. He must mean, like, if me and Drake made the track, right. that would be hot. Right. And I was like, yeah, that would be hot. The official OVO page tweeted me and was like, Drake, fe- Alan McCona featuring Drake, Tuesday remix. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, no way. I met Drake after the show, after watching the show and shit. Mm. And then uh, he came up to me singing some more lyrics from, like, I don't sell Molly and all that. And I was just like, what? How do you know my music? You know what I'm saying? Soon after that, McConnell signed to OVO and thought he won the music industry lottery. But just a year after he got signed, the Californian was lifting the lid on the experience and even claimed that Drake threatened to put hands on him at one point. In a lengthy interview with The Fader, McConnell expressed how he felt like Drake and his crew were, quote, scared when they saw how easily he could cook up some bangers. Before expressing how he felt betrayed by Drake's camp for the way he was treated when he entered their orbit. Why y'all wanna play games? Why didn't y'all just tell me didn't want to fuck with me anymore and just let me go about my own way why did y'all make me chase you all the way the fuck around and make me look like a fucking fool why would you do this i was threatened by others someone i so-called look up to saying we gonna fuck you up the next time we see you believing that ovo only signed him because they needed a hot song mcconnor that's crazy they only signed this nigga just be so that way they can just want to cook up a hot sometimes you can't this what happens Sometimes when you're too, sometimes it's good to be not, in a way, it's better you're not known in such, rather than people, cause nigga, shit, imagine, imagine, right, that a big artist like Drake and his camp, they sign you, only just to release you a year later, Cause they just wanted they and the reason why they only signed you cause they already wanted to cook up a hit song, and that's saying not only Drake's camp, any other camp over there, any other label out there does, any sneaky labels out there do do does this shit. Sorry, does this shit does this shit. That's crazy. The next. I was threatened by others. Someone I so-called look up to, saying, we gon' fuck you up the next time we see you. Believing that OVO only signed him because they needed a hot song, McConnell has stayed on his independent grind. But nothing's ever hit the same since he had this misadventure with OVO. But while there might have always been a ceiling on McConnell's success anyways, one person who many think has been held back by his association with Drake is Party Next Door. An R&B pioneer in the eyes of the fans, the fellow Canadian has been clicked up with Drake since 2014. Mm. While The Weeknd refused to sign to OVO, Party Next Door was happy to sign his name on the dotted line. Well shit, it's a good thing The Weeknd didn't sign cause hey, The Weeknd is going crazy with his, I mean hell, from the time of the pandemic in, for, this is how, and just me as a wrestling fan, nigga, every Wrestlemania from 2020 to 2020, what well, I, to 2024 from WrestleMania 20 from 36 to 40 bro it has almost been every weekend song think about that nigga this nigga has this nigga's one of his songs has been on every single WrestleMania since 2020 from 36 to 40. Five years. Well, yeah. 20, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. Nigga. Five years of him being... Five years of one of his songs being on every single WrestleMania. If that don't say that's some good process right there, nigga, what? <laughs> the, if, and hey, in his wrestling terms, if you're a wrestling fan like me, if that ain't such a great streak right there when it comes to... One of your songs being being a theme song for a wrestling company, she, she, to me as a wrestling fan, that's great, that's phenomenal. Back up a little bit. 
near in the eyes of the fans, the fellow Canadian has been clicked up with Drake since 2014. And while The Weeknd refused to sign to OVO, Party Next Door was happy to sign his name on the dotted line. I could go to a label where they don't know how to handle me and they don't care, he said of his decision. Or I'll have a mentor who's been through it, who knows exactly what I want to mean to my city and what I want to achieve. They know how to handle your emotions. Mm. I'll have freedom and guidance. Sure. Even though he claimed to have all this freedom, he later revealed in an interview that he had to give Drake the track Wednesday Night Interlude for one of his projects, even though he wanted it for himself. But there's no denying that Drake made a really big impact for him. In 2016, Come and See Me got him onto the charts. And in 2019, Loyal became his biggest commercial success so far. But there's times where PND's frustration with his role at OVO has boiled over, particularly when it comes to writing for other artists. I'm 23, but I feel 43, you know what I mean? <laughs> I saw him to write for these other people. Andy has faced criticism Damn, for with Drake or finding Imagine you being an artist. Well, there are artists out there who, even though they have their own music and such, the fact that they're in this in, in their label and they ghostwrite for their bigger art their much more bigger artists and such, and they're their artists themselves. Hey. To be honest, that's like some great that's some no pun intended shady shit his biggest successes alongside him. He once tweeted and deleted his plans to leave the label after one more album in November of 2020 when he wrote, one more album then I'll tell y'all what it's like. But now that so much time has passed, it's hard to imagine that even as talented as he is, that he could ever reach the full potential he had before wasting valuable time on the shelf at OVO. As for others, the Drake cosign seemed to come at the perfect time, only to be unable to capitalize. This was definitely the case for Young, Young Blue. Blue. An Alabama artist who initially Alabama. made back in 2017 with Miss It, Blue has always had clear star power. I've, but when his oh, buzz yeah, started to take a little dip, having Drizzy hop on 2020's Your Mind Still changed everything for him. Before that, he was battling to get a fair deal from record labels and almost signed his life away on what would have been a terrible contract. But the minute that he was seen next to Drizzy, he suddenly had leverage. The deal they was offering me, uh, it was like, a lot of projects involved in that, like, no, I was just like, man, I ain't got no other choice, like man. I'm just projects? gonna take the opportunity, huh? Like three, three projects or so? Like, like four. And they wanted my old masters, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hell to the fucking yeah. no. And it was like, I was like, that's how they get your ass. As soon as when you want to sign, they want you to give away your master. Nah, some of your old, some of your old masters that, Nick, that's what, why you think most artists today are making sure that they ma they put masters on their music. Cause nigga, they don't want the other labels to get their own shit. I know that I know damn well if I'm an artist and even if I'm gonna say nigga no. No. You is not finna take my you is not finna take a hundred percent of what I made for my music and put it in your pocket and then you must break nah. Ain't gonna happen. I don't give a rat's ass what you offering me. You not finna take a hundred percent of what I made from my own music. I am reacting. I'm reacting. Stop shaking the door. Stop shaking the door. Y'all see why I hate them, right? <laughs> Stop it! I'm about to beat. Please stop it! Leave me alone, I'm reacting! Let me react! Go away! I will, I will show this abuse. I, yeah, I will show this abuse on camera if you don't go away. Go away! Go away! Sorry about that, y'all. Had to straighten him out. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Hey, if you still enjoy it, glad that you stick around. But sometimes, it's annoying. <laughs> but yeah, like I was ranting before I was rudely interrupted. If you think... Sorry, I thought the doorknob was chickering, chickering again. But yeah, like I was saying, if you think... That I'm finna give you a hundred percent. If you think I'm finna give all my music, the all music that I had, 
all my boy you create get the flying f out of here get out of here with that shit. Like, man, three i'm projects? just gonna take the opportunity huh three three projects or so like like four and they wanted my old masters you know what I'm oh saying? hell to the fucking yeah no. and it was like number like like two, like 250 type shit. You feel 2.5 million? No. Like 250,000. Like, <laughs> advance. Okay, just put it in perspective. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, before the Drake record dropped, well, soon as the Drake record dropped, I was having bidding wars between eight and nine million dollars. Really? Yeah. The lead single from his album, Moon Boy, the record peaked at number 12, and soon after, he was blowing up like crazy. But to this day, Your Mind Still has doubled the plays of his next most popular song. And while albums like 2023's Love Scars 2 did alright, he still hasn't been able to get a hit that comes anywhere close to the impact of the collab with The Six God. Through these artists, we get a glimpse into the potential negative effects of getting the Drake stimulus package. But why does this happen to so apart. many of them? And who exactly is to blame? Drake's critics often suggest that there are hidden reasons behind his collaborations. Since his rise to fame, he's faced accusations of capitalizing on others' sounds or leveraging their hype for his own gain. Back in 2015, when he first started co-signing Kodak Black, Earl Sweatshirt called him a vulture on Twitter where he wrote, I still feel like Drake's overall statement isn't check this new shit I heard. It's always self-serving. And Yeah, it's kind of crazy that as soon- Cause they really think about it like this. Even like like even though throughout my entire video I've been saying like the minute all I'm gonna say is this sometimes yeah in a way even though it's cool even though it's good to want to make sure you got ears you got big, like them big artists and such hearing your music a lot of times you really in a way you don't want them to because if they do what Drake does and such and kept to capitalize shit I can't even say that basically try to ride the wave you can say of how the song is and such and then as soon as when like a Drake comes in and then he does his thing and then soon as later you go and such right Ten, like black boy said the song itself threw the hell up but you as the artist not so much then you're gonna realize mm, you might as well want to say fuck the industry <laughs> that's how it looks cuz ain't no way an artist is just gonna be that quick cuz really think about it you was a rock with my shit before right but as soon as when you see one of my song is popping right now in such like everybody in such not just the industry but everybody on media and such starting listening to your music oh all of a sudden now you just gonna want to instantly start listening to my music and not even listen to my music listen to the one song that's like literally popping right now and then you gonna want to captivate on it cap like want to ride the wave on it and want to add put put a remix on it and you want to be on it if that don't say some sneaky shit right there, I don't know what does, nigga. First started co-signing Kodak But Black, I could be wrong, y'all let me know. Called him a vulture on Twitter, where he wrote, I still feel like Drake's overall statement isn't, check this new shit I heard. It's always self-serving. And a lot of people agree. Drake obviously embraces the curator slash trendsetter persona, and he's decent enough at it. But it doesn't ever seem like he manages long-term working relationships yeah, with don't. these artists he quote-unquote discovers. Whether it's Dave Loaf, Fetty, or McConnell, it feels like nothing can happen in hip-hop without him. He's a vampire. Literally. To Drake, I mean, hey. Yeah. I mean, hey, think about it. Like the Black Boy. Have you seen Drake recently talking about Black Boy or so? Since their collab with Look Alive? Nope. I mean, like he literally said earlier on in the video. Earlier before the... Earlier on in the video. Well, later... What was it? Is it earlier on? Basically, like he said in the video. As soon as when... Some as soon as when the wave of what the popular song was starts to dim down a little bit, Drake like escapes it, escapes in my way, he escapes it and then go hide in his den and then <laughs> in a way wait till he sees who's the next victim and such. That's how I look at it. 
in my little funny way, but in a serious way, I guess in a way, I'm not saying guess, but look, I get it. It's a business thing. It's a business type of vibe, but that's some shady business. That's all I'm saying. No pun intended to Eminem. It's nothing as sinister as that. Whether it's UK rap or Afrobeat he's tapping into, it's just because he's a music lover. I like to enjoy what's going on, man. I appreciate like all these young people creating all these things. You know, it takes some real energy and synergy to like create a good song. Yeah. Like I hate that people think that like me being like into music from these kids that are trying to like make it and yeah. trying to build a name for themselves is like, oh, that's some like, that's some culture vulture. Like, <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't understand what that means. Yeah. Would you rather me like not? Exactly. Like, not it's not about if you do like the music and such, right? No one say you can't like the music. But it's just so convenient that when, as soon as when you wasn't, as soon as when it start becoming more and more popular, then you want to help on it and such. That's how most people, like, that's how I would look at it, correct? Hey, let me know if you think I'm right or wrong and such. No one can say you can't listen to the music, right? Nobody can't, nobody's saying that. But... It looks shady that as soon as when the wave of how the song was popular and such, right? All of a sudden now, you want to start listening to it. Whether you said you have been listening to it before or after. It's so crazy that all of a sudden now, you want to tell everybody in the world what the new music you're listening to and such. And then you want to say how fire it is. And then you want to collab with that person and such. When you could have just said you've been listening to it the own time. You've been listening to this person since day one and all that and such. You could have been saying that. So that's how I look at it. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't understand what that means. Yeah. Would you rather me like not exactly. like, acknowledge anything yeah. or support? Like that's some, some hater shit. But it is what it is. I, I see it a lot. And mm -hmm. I guess people have their own outlook on it. But it's fair to say that not everyone thinks it's as straightforward as that. In the eyes of the TDE rapper Daylight, he'll just use them up and throw them away. We live in an era where people need to suck other people's juice. No diddy. So hey, yo. they gonna make friends with him. Especially you know who. He's gonna make friends with him. He's gonna try to do a song with him and feed off of him like he does every record. Right? What's gonna happen is they're gonna get on your records. They're gonna take your style. And they're gonna blow up and then when you dry out they're gonna keep going and when you look at the careers of people like block boy jb and mcconnell he might have a point Me. then you have the problems he faces with the artists on his label similar to pnd's experience there's a feeling that many of the artists are fueling the drake machine ovo's majid jordan once described a studio setup that was way more similar to a boot camp than it was to a recording session <laughs> where artists are secluded working tirelessly on projects without outside contact the result well, it gave us hits like Just Hold On, We're Going Home, which, as many of you know, is one of Drake's most popular tracks. True. But it's stories like this that alter some fans' perceptions to the point that they believe Drake operates a musical sweatshop disguised as a label. <laughs> so a when the new Chinese crazy. four bats joined, they were trying to warn him about what to expect. I mean, hey. Welcome to the sweatshop, four bats. This Damn. day is indefinite. To noted Drake stand academics, there are definitely problems that arise from the Drake <laughs> stimulus package. Drake has successfully cleared himself of a number two this was artistry and wizardry at its finest hear me out drake rocked all these newcomers to sleep that could be possibly an incumbent okay little baby all right man you know see drake never hates on the new guy he just shows him overly love and almost gets credit for the new guy come up then after a while he steps away from the nigga and shit never looks the same. But when it comes down to it, Drake is ultimately free to give a feature to whoever he wants. And if they're not on his label, he doesn't owe them anything else. In fact, while it might get- But nigga, even if he is on your label, does that even fucking matter? Whether he's on your label or not, he'll find a way how to build you up, build himself up more likely from your shit. And then as soon as when your shit is going down a little bit more, start to fizzle out, he gonna move on to the next one, even though you're on his label. These rappers a buzz in wake of the track dropping. It's not his job to give them a whole career. I guess. I guess. I'm not, well, in a way, I guess that's true, right? It's not his job to give your ass a whole career and all. But 
all I'm saying, it does look shady. Some it it is sometimes shady when as soon as when somebody's popping and such, and because you gave him their number one hit and such, all of a sudden now you just want to disappear from them, just like that. You don't even want to still stay link, still link up with them from time to time. Not even on some like business music or whatnot. Or industry type shit, just on some like personal shit, like how you doing, like hit them up and something like that. To me, that looks like some sh shady shit. No Eminem, no Eminem pun intended, nothing like that. Like, that looks like some shady ass shit. That the only time when you was rocking with me, that you fuck with me and whatnot, no Diddy, was when I was popping and such. But as soon as when my, my clout and whatnot, my clout token or whatever right as soon as when it's starting to fizzle out all of a sudden then you just want to say deuces <laughs> that's how i look at it it's crazy but hey shout out to louis lou astia lou astia bro i'm i'm gonna keep on messing up his name so much lou astia or just shout out to lou i'm gonna just say lou for now shout out to lou on this video hey phenomenal job on this even though this was like nine days ago when like today's what the uh, 21st well by the time y'all see it it's the 22nd but the recording on this was the 21st but th this was on May 12th and such so hey either way hey hopefully this video does well but either way y'all let me know your opinions of this and such in the comments below what do you think of the as they call it the Drake stimulus package Sh sorry for that phone do you think it's cool do you think it's whack well, obviously, you're going to say it's whack, but give me honest, from, like your honest opinion. What do you think about whenever Drake does that type of feature where as soon as when a feature comes on, when he's on somebody's feature or somebody's featured on him, basically getting the Drake rub, he instantly blows them up. But as soon as when it fizzles out, he disappears. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about that. Y'all give me your opinions down in the comments below and what you think about this reaction down in the comments below, bro. I did a 50 long, even though this was 18 minutes of, of, of the video, this bitch stretched out to 51 minutes. But either way, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. It's been your boy, Homo Ziggy, signing out. Stay positive, keep the vibes up.